Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage, and uh, I want to take a moment to thank all the new subscribers, all the people that are sharing the content out there, all the new patrons, you guys are awesome. Uh, once again, couldn't do this without you guys, and uh, bear with me, we're doing some changes here at the garage, so you're going to see a lot more of these videos shot in this format, which is kind of the live format that I've set up, but... Part of that reason is, is we're transitioning from one set of equipment to a different set of equipment. There's a lot of changes happening behind the scenes. And this is actually a pretty decent platform for me to be able to throw videos together touching on specific topics. Today, we are talking about uh, troubleshooting timing issues. A patron recently came to me with an issue on his timing where it was uh, he was getting into some retard. And we looked at a lot of the factors that could cause this to happen. Whenever you are dealing with timing, you have base tables. And then through the base tables, you have a whole bunch of additive tables that are layers on top of it. Some of them will add timing. Others will subtract timing. We'll look at kind of all of those. We'll also look at the uh, log in particular that he sent to me that showed the issue that he was having. It turns out that it was an octane issue. And so we were actually moving from the high octane table down towards the low octane table. But in order to determine that, we had to go through and look at some of the other factors that can remove timing on that setup. So let's jump over to the uh, log right now. And as you can see, we've got some knock on here. That's a pretty good indication of what would be removing the timing. Normally you would kind of say, oh no, we've got some issues here. Uh, we need to go back and adjust our timing table. That's not necessarily the case. This is a predominantly stock platform that he's tuning on. And he is, in fact, running 87 octane. This is another good example of running 93 octane will actually net you more power because your vehicle, at least the modern ones, will be running more timing. So you're going to pick more power up just by running 93 octane because you're going to stay out of the low octane table. But if we jump over and look at the tune, this is a Gen 5 base tune, and we go into the advanced table, you can see that we've got our base tables down here, which are high octane, low octane, and then, we, of course, we've got the DOD, and we're not concerned about that. We're just looking at high octane and low octane right now. So this high octane table is our goal. We want to try and at least make this. If we were to compare where our timing is at any one point in time as a snapshot during a log, we should be able to go back and say, okay, at, uh, hold on, let me shrink this window down a little bit so I can uh, show you guys the, uh, scan here so if we go into an area where there's some throttle on here and we look at 3700 rpms and our timing is at 17 degrees so we could start at this range these two numbers check out our air mass and let's find our air mass reading here 653 milligrams we're probably not reading milligrams over here we're in grams so we can change this over to grams units grams 650 well that makes sense just shifts the decimal point over Durr. <laughs> but nonetheless we're going to be in this between well right around 0.64 so that being said we should be able to follow that over and see that we're going to be running 12 around 12 degrees of timing that's base timing as you can see in this instance we're actually at 17 degrees of timing so that's whenever we come over and start looking at some of the additives, the corrections. The big ones that we have is the flex fuel. This is a lot of positive timing on here. And if you were to see that if you, in this row, in that RPM range, it could add up to six degrees of timing on top of the base map. Obviously, that is not the case because this is on 87. But there's also some other base humidity. The more humid it is. This is probably pain, playing into it a little bit. So these are a lot of the different things that you're going to want to uh, log. So if you are having issues with timing, you want to come in here, look at these base correction tables and say, okay, well, is there a chance that I might be running some fuel that uh, has some ethanol in it? Well, I need to uh, log alcohol content if I have it. Then if I have one that has a humidity base table, I need to log humidity. I wonder if he's logging humidity on here. Got barometric pressure, ambient air temp, no humidity though. So that's not one that we can necessarily check against this one, but there's probably a degree or two being added in for humidity on this. Uh, intake air temp, that's a big one. We log that almost every time anyways. I suggest that one. So same ordeal. Intake air temp generally is going to always subtract timing unless you are freezing outside. Uh, but in your standard operating range, if, if it's a warm day, 
you're already looking at losing two degrees up to, you know, it's not crazy to get 167 degree intakes on a naturally aspirated vehicle uh, if it is pulling air from inside the engine bay. That's why cold air intake produces power. Not only can it free up some airflow, but the colder air also allows the engine to run more timing. So, uh, ECT engine coolant temp, same ordeal. This one's not that aggressive. It's only if you're overheating, it's going to reduce timing to try and, and uh, lower cylinder temps. So, it's often it's not going to be that, but EGR, I don't even think this is about to say, I don't think this has EGR on it. Okay, that being said, the other stuff that we have to deal with underneath the uh, retard stuff is the different like knock adaptive learning stuff so whenever we look at burst knock retard you've got things like delay hold time decay time the delay is is uh how long it waits before it starts lowering your timing uh the hold time is how long it holds the new timing adjustment before it makes another adjustment and then the decay is how long you have to go without knock before it starts going back from the low octane table to the high octane table. Uh, you can look at things uh, like the attack rate is how aggressive it is. This is something you can actually lower down. This is a pretty aggressive attack rate because it is a factory attack rate and this is there to provide the utmost safety. That being said, it's a little bit overkill. So if you want to come in here and half this, you're probably still going to get pulled out of a situation where you have knock in time to cause much issues. Uh, a couple of other things on here. Same ordeal with the recovery rate. Uh, this is basically uh, how fast it adds timing back in across based on the different range. So this will match up generally with your uh, knock table directly where you're seeing individual cells being retarded out. And that's about it. That's the big stuff on there. Just looking at some of the, you can adjust your knock sensor sensitivity, things like that. Dwell, there's not a whole lot of reason to necessarily mess with uh, dwell on this. Dwell is uh, whenever you get into higher uh, horsepower situations, you have what's called ignition dwell. And that is the amount of time that it's allowed to deliver the ignition spark to the spark plug from the coil. Uh, if you're getting into the point where you have to tune dwell, you're probably to the point where you need a professional tuner doing your tuning. Uh, so I know a lot of people like to go in here and mess with dwell, but they end up messing things up and it can be, it can be an issue, but same ordeal, come in here, look at all the different stuff in here, learn, you know, use the, uh, the trip, the tip that I taught you guys or told you guys the other day of going in here, printing out this screen, seeing what you already understand and what you need to look up and understand. So we've got like an octane modifier on here and it says that the knock learn factor is incremented uh, move towards low octane if knock retard exceeds this value. So if it reads more than two degrees of knock retard, uh, that's whenever it starts shifting over from the high octane value to the low octane value. So if we go back over and look at the scanner, you know, on this one, it may not be retarding that cell in timing but on this one it's going to because we have exceeded that two degrees if this is something where you're using the low octane as a safety fallback you can even lower that out or if you're having issues and you think that might be in uh something that's causing significant problems you can come in here and bump this up to three four degrees you're probably still going to be fairly safe on that situation out beyond four degrees of knock you probably need to stay out of it figure out if you have a more significant problem that could be causing issues so uh, but there's a lot of stuff in here that you can probably kind of ignore for the most part. There's a lot going on on the standard knock table as said. Just kind of pay attention to your base table. Look for your additives, your multipliers, things like that that could be adding timing. Then make sure you're logging the parameters that could be subtracting timing to make sure that you are uh, running the best that you can on that. Another one is uh, you can uh, be losing it because of torque. So... Keep that in mind. If there's nothing that else showing up that's pulling timing out of your vehicle and you have a torque-based model, uh, if your torque is not set high enough on your uh, virtual torque tables, it will not only close the intake throttle body, but it will start pulling timing out. Same ordeals uh, on idle. There's some stuff in here on idle that will uh, adjust timing automatically. So, uh, don't necessarily get hung up on base. Let's see if underneath the idle table, there's probably a 
Da, 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 da. Mm, 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 mm. Well, this is this being a torque based model, it's not quite the same, but there is the chance in idle on some of the other platforms where you are on a completely different map or uh, timing idle spark map compared to whenever you're actually driving the vehicle. So keep that in mind also. So if you're having some weird timing uh, situations on idle, uh, you can check for that in particular because having a timing issue on idle can be completely different even whenever you kind of put it into park or neutral. Whenever you uh, give it any kind of input through the throttle, uh, and that goes from 0%, you're coming out of the idle tables and you're moving into your standard driving table. So, uh, and in fact, we had a, I had a guy contact me the other day that had a issue with his vehicle. It would, whenever he would first fire it up, you would see the uh, intake or the, sorry, you would see the timing shoot up to about 25, 30 degrees where it should be. And then it would flatline back to five degrees. And in that situation, he actually had a bad cam position sensor. So. Uh, but we went through the steps of looking at all the different things that could be pulling timing out, trying to isolate an area where it would flatline, cause it to flatline at 10 degrees, couldn't find anything through the tune itself, and then finally he was able to find out that it was a piece of hardware that was causing the issue. So that basically wraps up uh, the basis of looking at your different spark stuff, some of the things to look for to make sure that you're getting it, as I said, just pay attention to your high octane table. Make sure you're at least achieving that. Uh, and then if you're not, try and isolate why you are not uh, achieving your high octane table. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that button down below. Uh, throw a like, you know, thumbs up here if you find any of this information uh, helpful. We will be having another live stream this Thursday, 8 o'clock Eastern. Make sure and check it out. We'd love for you all to show up to that. And as usual, I want to thank you for stopping by the garage.